Hello everyone, welcome to a series of lectures on computer architecture. Today I'm going to start by looking at the design of modern computer systems and where it comes from. So what are the key features that we find in any computer system and why do we have them, where do they come from? And that means looking at what we call the von Neumann architecture. So we're going to learn the basics of von Neumann architecture today. And by the end of the lesson, I hope you'll be able to describe what was important about von Neumann architecture and be able to describe the key features of the von Neumann architecture. I'm going to try and go through this quite quickly, try and keep it under 15 minutes. Uh, but remember, you can always play sections again if you don't catch it the first time. Have a look at this picture over here. This is a very important early computer system. This is the Colossus. It holds the distinction of being the world's first programmable electronic digital computer. And this was built in 1943 at Bletchley Park in the UK to help with the job of breaking German codes in World War II. So even though it's of great historical significance for computing, uh, the actual Colossus and the work it did was a national secret for a long time. Um, when I was at school and going through the start of university, the American ENIAC system was usually credited with being the first programmable electronic digital computer. But in fact, the Colossus came out a couple of years earlier, but was then kept as a national secret. Of course, if any of you have seen the film Imitation Game, about Alan Turing, you know a little bit about Bletchley Park, the work that was done there, and why it was kept top secret. So even though the Colossus was a great breakthrough in computer technology, it did have a problem. And this was that although data could be stored in the memory of the Colossus, it couldn't store programs in memory. That meant if you wanted to change the program, you had to get into the guts of the machine and rebuild the cables and the switches needed to make your new program. This was very time consuming for the Colossus and early computer systems. So for example, the American ENIAC system, which came out a short time later, I believe it took about three weeks to rebuild all the patches and cables and switches require to change the program. So clearly not very convenient. And if you can imagine you had to do that on your computer every time you wanted to use a new piece of software, wouldn't really be very efficient. So of course people like Alan Turing and other early computer scientists were looking at designs that would help improve matters. One of these great um, people who was involved in the early days of computer technology was John von Neumann. John von Neumann really was one of the great uh, intellects of the 20th century. He was a very gifted American Hungarian mathematician who made great advances in set theory, game theory, and was also involved in the Manhattan Project, which was the project to build the first atomic bomb. However, in the context of this lesson, we really want to look at his contribution to computer science. And this is what is now credited as the von Neumann architecture. In 1945, he described a computer architecture in which both the data and the program were stored in the computer's memory. Now, by having the program stored in memory, it made it a lot easier to change things because the data and the program are in binary, they're stored in the memory, and you can change the data and the program whenever you like. And this is still the fundamental design concept behind all modern computer systems. So we're talking about a design that's over 70 years old. The key features of the von Neumann architecture are still present and incorrect, sorry, present and correct in your laptop, your desktop, your tablet, uh, your smartphone, or indeed in a supercomputer somewhere out in the world. 
So what we're going to do is really look at what the key features of the von Neumann architecture are and what their function is. So here we go. Here is the classic diagram. If you do a search for von Neumann architecture on Google Images, you will get lots of very similar diagrams. So again, at the top here, we've got the key point that the memory holds both the data and the program. We also have things like the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit. We've got input outputs. We've got accumulators. We've got lots of other features. One point to make is that when we talk about computer architectures, we're not talking about a specific design for a specific computer system. We're talking about something that is more abstract and that can be applied to lots of different computers, as the von Neumann architecture was. So let's go through some of these key points. So we can see here we have a control unit. The control unit is responsible for decoding the instructions from the program and controlling how data moves around the computer system. This is why we call it a, a control unit. We have the arithmetic logic unit, or ALU, and this basically does all the math and logical functions. It carries out all the calculations. It does all the addition and subtraction, all the greater than, less than, all really the key processing that we think of when we think of a computer system. We also need to transfer data around our computer system, and we do this using buses. And buses are simply the wires that carry the data around the computer. In this diagram, they're donated by the, they're donated. They, um, my mind has gone completely blank. That's the trouble with doing a live video. They're denoted by the arrows connecting the different parts together. So if you look at a motherboard very closely, you'll see the little wires running along the motherboard. And these are the buses that carry the data around different systems. Uh, we've got the accumulator here in the arithmetic logic unit. The accumulator is a type of register. And registers are memory locations within the computer system that have a specific function. And we'll take a look at those in greater detail in just a moment. Important thing to remember is that when we think about a modern computer system, the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, all the registers are all together in the same microchip that we call the CPU or central processing unit, which is a very small part of a computer system. It might be only about the size of your thumb or a little bit bigger, but it's really the brains of the operation. And just to finish off this diagram, you'll notice that we've got little boxes for input and output. Of course, if you can't input data into the computer, it's not going to be able to do anything. And obviously, once you finish doing all your processing and calculation, that data then needs to be output in a way that humans can make sense of. Let's take a look at the registers now. We've got a couple of diagrams here. Don't worry if you can't make sense of them to start with. They're just examples of the types of registers that are important in von Neumann architecture. Again, for the points of view of this lecture, Registers are just memory locations with specific purposes. The main memory is general purpose. It can hold any type of data. But registers have a specific type of data and a specific job. So the first one is the one that we looked at earlier, the accumulator. And this is just temporary storage for the results of calculations made by the arithmetic logic unit. And it just saves time and effort and energy you don't have to put those results back into memory if you're going to need them a short time later. They can be just stored during the accumulator while all the calculations are taking place. Next is the program counter. This keeps track of the memory location for the next instruction to be dealt with by the computer. The program counter then passes this next instruction to what we call the memory address register, the MAR. So again, it's probably something you've come across before, but in the main memory of a computer system, what we call RAM today, uh, all the locations have a very specific address, a unique address, in the same way that your house has a unique address, or you have a unique telephone number, 
or you have a unique bank account number. The memory address register stores the memory location for data or instructions that may need to be fetched from memory or that are going to go the other way and are going to get stored into memory. Okay, so that is the location in memory for data instructions that you're going to take from the memory or that you're going to put back into the memory. Now the memory data register or MDR this is the register that is used to store the data or instructions that have been fetched from memory or the data that is going to be transferred to and stored in the memory. So it's not holding the memory location or the address, it's actually holding the data or instruction itself. We also have the current instruction register and this stores the most recently fetched instruction while it's waiting to be coded and executed by the computer. So if the memory data register pulls data from the memory and it turns out to be an instruction, that is then passed on to the current instruction register where it's then processed. Now, it can be a little confusing when we talk about registers, especially the MAR and the MDR. They're very similar in name and the functions are easily confused. The key point here is that the MAR is the memory address register. It doesn't hold the data or the instruction. It holds the location in memory of the data or instruction. It holds the address. The memory data register, on the other hand, actually holds the data or instructions. So either it's taking data or instructions from the RAM and holding it in there, or it's holding data, maybe the result of a calculation, that's going to go back into memory. So again, you can always replay this if you want. Feel free to do a little research on the internet. Make sure you're comfortable with what these are and what the key, the key features are. Okay, in summary, the von Neumann architecture includes program and data loaded into memory. This is what made it better than older systems like the Colossus. Sometimes the von Neumann architecture is called the stored program computer because the program is stored in memory. And this makes it a lot easier to change the program. It needs a control unit, an arithmetic logic unit, and registers. And registers are memory locations with a special purpose that are used temporarily while the computer is running. Okay, I hope that wasn't too painful and I hope you stayed awake. And I will look forward to seeing you all in class, ladies and gentlemen.